the top headlines for today in the world of startup but let's get it going with a startup that is very special in terms of the drone making. They're a Chennai based drone company and my colleague Avang Dupash actually managed to speak to Garuda Aerospace. That's the company we're talking about. She spoke to the CEO as well as the co-founder of the company Agneshwar Jay Prakash of Garuda Aerospace. Let's go across and listen into the conversation. Good to have you on board. So run us through who some of the leading investors are that have participated in this round and uh, a little bit more about why you've raised funds currently. Thank you so much for having me on, ma'am. Yes, it is indeed really, uh, uh, very elating to share that we have raised uh, 25 crore rupees, about $3 million, and the lead investors are Venture Catalyst uh, as well as WeFounder Circles. We also have a couple of other smaller angels like Aim Angels, Sands Angels, and a few other um, investors on a private side who have put in money. Uh, the reason why we had to raise this round was for a bridge for executing a lot of our orders. A uh, sudden surge of drones have come about. Uh, over 5,000 odd drones have been pre-booked. Uh, we've also landed a large IFCO order of delivering 4,000 drones. And the government, in fact, wants uh, over 2,000 drones on drones as a service model for the agricultural segment. So in line of that, we felt that it was prudent that we raise a quick bridge round right now to ensure that we are able to meet the demands. All right. So what will the proceeds uh, exactly be used for? Um, take us through a little bit about what kind of growth plans you have in place, um, given that you do want to accelerate the demand for it within the agri sector as we are seeing demand only picking up. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Garuda Aerospace is the first ever drone company to receive the dual DGCA certification for both manufacturing as well as training. So this gives us uh, like, you know, tremendous uh, avenues for revenues in different segments, namely agriculture, but we also have orders lined up for industry 4.0 training as well as in the defense. So in line to meet of all, uh, meeting all these goals, I believe that we had to be prepared with uh, some amount of funding. And I thought that uh, apart from the working capital, there is a lot of technology developments and R&D updates. Uh, we've also filed for uh, four new patents for our drones. Advanced drones that can be uh, multi-purpose and customizable for a variety of purposes. So we feel that there will be a tremendous use case for these drones um, and we require some amount of funding. So most of the amount of monies that we have raised will go into working capital for delivering the drones. Uh, some amount of money will be utilized for uh, technology developments, R&D, and ensuring that we are solidifying the tech mode that has made Garuda one of the most valuable drone companies in India today. You've also achieved a, 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 a milestone with the partnership with IFCO for a drone order of 400 units. What is the kind of pre-booking that you're currently standing on? How many dealers do you have nationwide? What does the order book look like given that you are working with a first mover advantage in the agricultural drone segment? Absolutely. Uh, Garuda Aerospace boasts for a 55% uh, market share in the precision agricultural drone segment. Uh, we have over 400 registered dealers and distributors throughout the country. We're present throughout the country, and uh, that has been a key to ensure that very good, uh, efficient, and quick after-sales support services have been rendered to all of our clients throughout, the, uh, throughout India. Uh, apart from that, this is a very nascent technology space. It's an emerging tech space, so a lot of handholding is required. Um, and even though we are having over 5,000 pre-booked orders, nearing 10,000 almost, uh, we feel that there is still a tremendous amount of learning and handholding that youngsters in our country, and especially rural entrepreneurs uh, in rural India and in the districts require. So uh, our expansion plans are uh, uh, strategically uh, penned out uh, over the next uh, five to six months, and we have been uh, doing very, very good numbers. Uh, we uh, had 15.9 crores the previous year. We had 40. We uh, completed FY23 with about 47 crores, and we're hoping that anywhere between 100 to 120 crores is where we'll end up in FY24. Uh, so I believe that, uh, like you know, the demand has like left us in a very, very good situation where we could aspire for higher revenues, but we want to grow stably and ensuring that corporate governance, uh, all of our uh, technology is intact to ensure that uh, we are prime to go IPO next year. Okay, tell us a little bit more then next year. So what is it when it comes to your overall financials then? You turn profitable in FY22. What kind of a clip are you growing at? How exactly is business shaping up? And do you have a specific timeline for your IPO? Absolutely. I mean, yes, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, Garuda Aerospace has been profitable. 
Uh, 22, uh, we had above uh, 30 percentage of uh, EBITDA margins, uh, net profit margins of about 24%. Similar this year, we were profitable. So we wanted to have three good years of profitable uh, business and establishing the business model, which is sustainable asset light market uh, agnostic and uh, recession proof model that we have uh, specialized in. So we wanted to have that under our belt before we go uh, public. And I think that the markets are uh, very, uh, I would say, generous towards emerging drone uh, as well as emerging technology companies. I feel that um, Garuda with our dual engine, one is uh, our brand ambassador, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, and also fueled by tremendous technology has enabled us to reach the widest pockets of our country. Um, and with that, I feel that we will be ready anywhere between September to December of next year to go public. Okay, good to know. Um, what is the outlook then when it comes to your market share? It's about a 55% market share in this segment. How are you looking to grow it uh, further? How are you looking to really capitalize on the steady growth within the drone industry, which is estimated at about $7 billion currently? Yes, I mean, uh, when you take a look at the precision agricultural drone segment, uh, farmers are spending anywhere between 20 to 25,000 crores to spray their fields with pesticides and fertilizers every single year. So it, it becomes a recession-proof business model when you're uh, providing drone technology to suit those needs. Um, but we are not just stopping there. We feel that the consumer drone segment is a very, very big segment that we want to get into. The defense as well as the industry 4.0 space are also very exciting. Um, we have uh, manufactured uh, over 30 different types of drones. We also have the type certificate for the agricultural drone. We're filing for uh, more certifications under the DGCA. Uh, and we're also uh, the first ever drone company to receive the agri-drone loan as well as the drone subsidy. Uh, if you take a look, the government has uh, been launching a lot of progressive initiatives for the drone segment right from 2020 when they started liberalizing drone rules. So the entire segment has seen tremendous growth. But at the same time, there is also a lot of indigenization benefits. Uh, we're part of the PLI. Uh, these uh, progressive changes have come uh, at a very, very nice time. So that is why companies like Garuda Aerospace has been able to weather the funding winter. So uh, moving forward, we will look at diversification. We will look at exports. We will also look at the aggregation model along with Cognizant Technologies, where we're working together on uh, launching the first ever Uber for Drones app, where you will have drone services provided uh, throughout the country. Um, and we feel that all of these amazing things that we are going to do in the next three to six months, especially with the new funding that we have raised, is going to prime up for our IPO next year. All right. So. Um... What is the outlook uh, as well when it comes to, uh, you know, um, the valuation that it currently stands at? But, but uh, basis your previous uh, funding round, what did the valuation stand at and what does it currently hold at? Well, uh, we've been, uh, uh, like, you know, from a valuation perspective, it has never been my interest to raise and chase valuations like most uh, most startups these days because if you take a look at what's happened in the last couple of years um, because of the funding winter and because of a lot of startups um, uh, facing headwind and uh, market conditions it has been quite difficult to pick valuations but we are very uh, stable right there and we are continuing to raise at the same valuation that we did last year however uh, starting with the current round uh, which we will, uh, for the Series B, we should be able to raise at a lot higher, maybe 2.5 to 3x amount of valuation that we have been raising at Series A. Uh, but for me, like I told you, ma'am, it's not about the valuations. It's about how much of a value that we are able to create for our customers as well as our clients throughout the country. Um, we feel that farmers are able to benefit um, when they're using precision agricultural Garuda Kisan drones, they're able to ensure that over 28% of yield is increasing every single year when they use drones and when they don't. Um, you know, they're using 70% less amount of pesticides uh, and uh, almost 60% less amount of water when they're uh, utilizing drones. So that is the amount of impact that we are having in a huge uh, precision agricultural market like India. So I believe valuations will definitely come. Uh, that is not our primary focus. Our focus is into creating value for our clients as well as for our investors.
Okay, and if I may, let's rewind the clock back. You're an alumnus of Harvard Business School and a former Asian gold medalist. So what really led you to enter uh, this space, become an entrepreneur? How did it even happen with Garuda? Well, I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, it's nice that you're bringing and uh, bringing back my swimming days. I think a lot uh, of how we run the business at Garuda can be attributed to my swimming days in terms of me being an Asian gold medalist. Uh, it, it was very, very hard work. And I think that is what we bring to the table. We at Garuda may not be the most talented, the most smartest, the most intelligent. We don't have the IITians working with us, but we definitely make it up with all the grit, determination and the hard work that we put in every single day when we come to work. Uh, persistence, resilience has been uh, like, you know, the fundamental pillars of my swimming career when I led the country uh, as an athlete. And then when I went to Harvard, I learned the uh, intricate details and the nuances of business and what not to do more than what needs to be done. And I think that has uh, definitely shaped my business career. And it has also led to a lot of uh, amazing strategic partnerships. A lot of good friends and connects have uh, advised me. And, you know, Garuda runs on a very, very, uh, like, you know, novel thought process of surrounding ourselves with people who are more smarter and more intelligent than us and being guided by a very, very good advisory board. Uh, because of uh, that, I believe that we have been able to uh, skip a lot of pitfalls and ensure that we have not been uh, falling prey to all these usual mistakes that startups make. So we run more so like a corporate, but with the same energy as a startup. Okay, thanks so much for joining in and wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much, ma'am. Take care. Thanks so much for that, Avan. A very, very interesting chat there where Garuda actually raised 25 crores in a fresh bridge round of funding. And obviously, the company has given us some key highlights in terms of what their revenue expectation is by FY24 end. They're expecting the revenue to be where, anywhere near that 100 crore mark as well. And they're planning an IPO soon. And that could be as soon as next year, somewhere between September to December. All eyes are going to be on that, but a very, very interesting chat that Avan actually managed to have with the founder and the CEO of the company.